Coming up today, President Park Geun-hye is in Paris for a state visit celebrating 130 years of diplomatic ties between South Korea and France. We have a series of special reports. For the first time ever, the U.S. Treasury Department declares North Korea a primary money laundering concern, essentially locking the regime out of the American financial system. Plus, the South Korean economy grew half a percent in the first three months of this year, continuing its zero percent range growth for the second straight quarter. Stay tuned for these stories and more. Hello, it's noon on Thursday, the 2nd of June. You're tuned in to our midday newscast here on Arirang TV. Thank you for joining us. I'm Mark Broom. Our top story this afternoon, wrapping up her three-nation tour of Africa, President Park Geun-hye is now in France for a state visit celebrating 130 years of diplomatic relations between Seoul and Paris. She will start her four-day trip with a Korea-France business forum that's set to start in a few hours from now. Our Song ji son who's travelling with the President, files this report from Paris. Saturday marks the 130th anniversary of diplomatic ties between Seoul and Paris. And President Park's state visit to France was made possible by an invitation from her French counterpart, Francois Hollande. Through summit talks Friday, the two leaders will adopt a joint communique aimed at strengthening their comprehensive partnership in the 21st century. Seoul sees that there's still room for growth and expanding trade volume and investment with the sixth largest economy in the world and third biggest in Europe. To realize the potential, the two sides will seek to diversify trade items and bolster investment while seeking to foster new industries and the creative economy. Deepening cooperation on the international stage from climate change to nuclear threats is another agenda. The two countries will discuss measures to reinforce cooperation in the creative economy and cultural prosperity. We will also garner support from France on our drive to reunify the Koreas. We'll also seek to boost our global partnership to resolve international issues like sustainable development and climate change. President Bao will also be granted a Doctor of Science degree at a Paris university acknowledging her initiatives for creative economy and cultural prosperity. President Park's official schedule begins with a business forum and partnership on Thursday, followed by a culture event highlighting Hallyu. To further promote the Korean wave, a K-Culture Week is being held in nine cities across France. Song Ji-san, Arirang News, Paris. Now, President Park and hes trip to France is the first state visit by a Korean leader to that country since the turn of the century, and it coincides, as we just heard, with the 130th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the two sides. For a look at the past, present and future of Korea and France's long-standing friendship, Kwon jang reports. President's Park and Hollande shaking hands has become a familiar sight in the last three years, with relations between the two countries active and healthy as ever. Diplomatic ties started in 1886 with the signing of the Treaty of Friendship, Commerce and Navigation. Relations were suspended during Japan's colonial rule in Korea, but they were revived with the Korean War as some 3,400 French troops fought alongside South Korea and the UN forces. Since then, diplomatic, economic and cultural ties have flourished. Annual trade between the two countries stood at over 8.5 billion US dollars as of 2015. Both countries have established mutual culture centers and academic exchanges are at an all-time high. For South Korea, France plays a key role in rallying international support to put pressure on North Korea. In addition to signing the UN resolution against North Korea, France led the charge for the EU to separately impose further sanctions on the regime, as well as looking to add more sanctions of its own. North Korea is a key issue. France may not have official diplomatic ties with North Korea, but they do play an important role in providing humanitarian aid and engaging in cultural activities. Their influence and pressure in enforcing the sanctions is especially important. For President Park's latest visit, Korea is looking to cement France's stance on North Korea, as well as expand economic and cultural exchanges between the two countries. 
Experts say Korea should also look to work with France in playing a bigger role in dealing with global issues such as climate change and security. On one end of the Eurasian continent is France and on the other is Korea, so their cooperation will be important, for example, in terrorism. Cooperation in preventative measures and sharing of information is key in fighting terrorism. Kwon Jang-ho, Arirang News. The fruits of Korea and France's strong relationship is evidence, evident rather, throughout the streets of Seoul and in one neighbourhood in particular. Our Lee ji takes a look at the so-called Little France of Korea. Korea and France have shared many economic and cultural exchanges over the past 130 years. Business people and expatriates have been welcomed in both countries. And today, more than 4,000 French people live in Korea. And as the number of French people in Korea grew, they formed their own community. There's even a French village in a plush residential area of southern Seoul called Seoul Village. About 300 French nationals live in Seoul Village, also known as Little France in Seoul, an area filled with various French institutes and stores. Even the road signs are written in French. One of the main reasons French people gather in the village is because the French School of Seoul is located here. Since the school moved from Itaewon in 1985, more French families have settled in this neighborhood. With about 450 students from kindergartners to high schoolers, the school uses a French curriculum to help students adapt to any French school in the world. But there's one special requirement in the curriculum. One of the strong requirements of uh, this network is to make sure that we integrate the local culture and language in our curriculum. And when they, for instance, uh, uh, study what Chuseok is like or the various traditions of the country, or from the age of eight, they study the Korean language. And to assist foreigners living in Korea, global learning centers were established in 2008. The centers are open to all, but the programs and staff at this center in Seoul Village are mainly French. We help them with whatever small or big questions they have on living in Korea. As centers need to reflect the foreign population in the area, all of our staff speak French and we hold more programs regarding the French culture. The center provides various assistance, ranging from dealing with small language barriers to teaching Korean cultural events. During my first week here, it was for me uh, the first persons I met, and they explained me a lot about Korea, and I know that I have found a place where I can be welcome and have all the answers to my questions. President Park's current state visit to France will help continue the country's rich history of cultural and business exchanges. Lee ji Arirang News. Now, in the rest of the day's news, South Korea has welcomed Washington's latest step toward completely cutting banking ties with Pyongyang after the U.S. Treasury Department designated North Korea as a primary money laundering concern. Let's take a look at what the spokesman for Seoul's foreign ministry had to say. The South Korean government highly evaluates the measure. It reflects Washington's resolute will to keep imposing strong unilateral sanctions on North Korea, along with the thorough implementation of UN Security Council Resolution 2270 to bring about actual change in North Korea, including the regime's denuclearization. According to the ministry, it's also noteworthy that the designation came months before Washington's deadline for reviewing its North Korea Sanctions Enforcement Act. The government expects the designation to not only take a direct toll on North Korea's financial affairs, but to also bring about indirect effects, as other countries uh, with U.S. bank accounts could be affected if they do not stop transactions with Pyongyang. Now, watchers say the designation could also be seen as a message to China to keep the pressure on the North. According to a ministry official, Seoul received no description from the U.S. of any particular country to be targeted. The UN Security Council has condemned North Korea for its failed missile test this week, as well as an earlier test conducted back in April. The 15 members unanimously adopted a press statement on Wednesday local time, slamming the regime for stoking tension. Aguanzoa has the details. 
The UN Security Council wasted no time responding to North Korea's latest provocation. Just a day after Pyongyang's failed Musudan ballistic missile launch, the council adopted a press statement saying the launches are in, quote, grave violation of the DPRK's international obligations under United Nations Security Council resolutions. It also noted that the tests contribute to the regime's development of nuclear weapons and increased tension in the region. The statement, under the lead of the United States and Japan and consulted with non-member South Korea, was unanimously accepted by all 15 members of the Security Council, including the North's longtime ally, China. The statement also referred to another missile test late April, which, despite calls for a press statement, was not adopted as Russia asked for more time to review it. It's the fifth time the Council has issued a press statement since it adopted tough new sanctions against North Korea in March, following Pyongyang's fourth nuclear test and long-range missile launch early this year. Kwon Soa, Arirang News. Now, in domestic political news, South Korea's political parties are still locked in a bitter disagreement over who should fill a key post in the newly opened 20th National Assembly. The ruling Sanuri Party says it's tradition for the ruling party to hold the position of Assembly Speaker and says the main opposition Minju Party of Korea's single-seat majority doesn't automatically qualify it to take it. The Minju Party says it should hold the position and even offer to give up chairmanship of the powerful Judiciary Committee if it can have the Speaker's seat. The seat is prized as a Speaker can use his or her power to introduce a bill for a vote without first going through parliamentary committees in the event of a natural disaster, a state emergency or upon agreement between the rival parties. On a related note, the ruling Sonuri Party has also finalised the 11 members of its interim council, which will be tasked with preparing for the party convention in July, when the party will choose a new leadership. Korea Central Bank says that the country's economic growth rate has remained in the 0% range for a second straight quarter. The slowing growth is driven by feeble demand both at home and abroad. Shin Se-min with the details. Another quarter of slowing growth. The Korean economy grew half a percent in the first three months of this year, continuing its 0% range growth for the second straight quarter. That's a slowdown from the 0.7% growth logged in the fourth quarter of last year. The Bank of Korea said the figure was dragged down by slowing demand at home and abroad. The overall GDP growth was driven down by a decrease in domestic spending in both durable and non-durable goods, eventually upgrading the estimated figure released in April by 0.1 percentage point. With that, the country's exports dropped over 1 percent during the first three months of this year. Construction investment rose nearly 7 percent, while facilities investment dipped 7.4 percent during the same period. The local economy grew at 2.8 percent compared to the year before, matching the central bank's growth outlook for this year. Still, questions linger over whether the economy will be able to stay on target, as to 2.8 percent is a downgrade from 3 percent projection in January. Experts suggest a rate cut down the line, as domestic spending hasn't yet returned to normal after the MERS outbreak last year. They say measures to boost domestic spending are sorely needed, as the country's economic growth has been in the 0 percent range for nearly two years, with the exception of the third quarter of last year when growth was at over 1 percent after a government stimulus package following the MERS outbreak. Shin Se-min, Arirang News. Now, the volatility of Korea's benchmark KOSPI has hit its lowest level in a year, despite concerns the Federal Reserve is set to raise rates. According to Korea Exchange on Thursday, the KOSPI 200 Volatility Index, or V KOSPI 200 Futures, stood at 11.55 as of May 27th, and that's the lowest it's been since mid-May of last year. The latest figure is unusually stable considering the current global economic conditions as well. Last August, the index rose to 28.58 following the Fed's first rate hike and China's economic slowdown. Analysts say the current stability could be because the possible influences of uncertainties, including 
uh, a possible US rate hike and Britain's possible exit from the European Union have already been reflected on global markets. Honda, Mercedes-Benz and Ford are recalling a combined 13 models amounting to some 9,000 units in Korea. Honda's Civic and Legend models are among others in Honda's range with over-pressurised airbags that, when deployed, could potentially injure the driver. Mercedes-Benz Korea is recalling E-Class sedans for problems with their powertrain control system. Seoul's Transport Ministry says an error in the model's powertrain software may fail to transmit power to the automatic transmission. In regard, regards to Ford, well, their Lincoln sedans were found to have fuel tanks that may corrode when exposed to de-icing chemicals. Owners will be notified individually, but all the relevant information can be found on the Transport Ministry's website. Now, in the United States, two people have been killed in a murder-suicide on the university compounds of UCLA. The police chief of Los Angeles has confirmed that one man shot another and then himself in the university's engineering building. He said police could not immediately confirm the identities of the two people killed, but a suicide note was apparently found. The police chief told reporters that there's no continuing threat and a two-hour-long campus-wide lockdown has been lifted and uh, UCLA officials say classes will resume as normal on Thursday. Well, those are stories we've been following on this Thursday afternoon here in Seoul. For more of the latest, don't forget to check out either our website, adirang.com forward slash news, or our smartphone application, which you can find by searching for Adirang TV in your app store. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.